not high. Yeah. It's not far. <laughs> but he is gone. He's got one of the one three. One of the three. Yeah. Hall of Famer. But, but then he corrects it right after. He goes, he hit a line drive into, <laughs> into the lower deck. Yeah. <laughs> It's just not the most real-time accurate, but it's accurate when it's all said and done, right? Exactly. By the way, have you ever done – you must have done play-by-play, -play, right? I did. Uh, by the way, Larry David here uh, on The Rich Eisen Show, uh, season nine of Curb, uh, after a six-year hiatus. Thank goodness it's back, and good to see you here. I did um, about nine games for ESPN. That's it. Wow. They let me out of the Sports Center studio just do a handful of games. But did you, you did games before that, though, right? No. It was the only time I ever what? Yeah. Yeah. You, mean, you mean you never did play by play in never. your life? No, and they stuck and, me out there. And they stuck you out there? <laughs> How'd you know what to do? That's insane. Well, I didn't. A. B, the first game I did, this is a true story. It was a one nothing final between the Padres and Expos that went ten innings. You did baseball? Yes, I did. You had to do all that blather in between? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's really, that's my, something. And my analyst had never done it either. Chili Davis. Remember Chili Davis from the Yankees? You remember Chili? Yeah, well, he was the giant first. Yeah, he was yeah. giant. Yeah. yeah, and then the Yankees, too. Yeah. yeah. And did, then, you ever, did you ever want to do play-by-play? -play? I did when I was a kid. What do you mean? When I was like a kid, like eight, nine, ten years old, twelve like, years old. Just by yourself in a room or something it's like sitting that? Sitting in front of the TV, you know, trying to do it. Yeah. And how, how was it? Was it good? I don't think I was very good. No. <laughs> and my mother said to me, y you're not going to be a baseball announcer. <laughs> Who do you think you are, a baseball? You're not special, Larry. You're not going to be an announcer. <laughs> was Vince Scully your guy, basically? Like Mel Allen. <clears throat> Mel Allen. Oh, for the yeah, Yankees, of right. course. Of course. Mel Allen was the greatest, yeah. Yeah, and then he would always do the This Week in Baseball. I remember yes, that stuff yes. in the 70s and the 80s. Yeah. Good old Mel Allen. So that's how you became a Yankee fan is back in the day? Is I became a Yankee fan because my brother, my older brother by four and a half years was a Yankee fan. Right. And um, so he was a Yankee fan, so I became a Yankee fan. We were the only two Yankee fans in Brooklyn. Because you know. it was the Dodgers, was the Dodgers territory yeah. pretty much there. Yeah, so um, it led to a lot of uh, ill will. <laughs> <clears throat> Ruffians on the street? Would, would take you down? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> the Giants, Dodgers, I, Ruffians? I, I wasn't taken down because I was a Yankee fan, but I, I did get in a lot of arguments. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Larry David here on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, so how did you become a Jet fan? Because normally it's Giant Yankee, right? I was a Giant fan, I, and I still root for the Giants. Okay. But then when, when Namath came along, uh, I was so taken with him and the team, and I loved watching him play that I became Jets. Okay, and yeah. then and then you never jumped off that bandwagon? Never, I could never jumped off, no. Because so many opportunities. I jump. know, so many. <laughs> By the way, the worst thing to happen to the Jets this year mm -hmm. was McCown being good. The, that's the worst thing that could have happened to the Jets. <laughs> yeah. It's what a tortured mind of the Jet fan. Right. Re yes, because 0-16 would normally be worse. Because now he's but... just going to make us mediocre, you know. <laughs> He'll get us too many wins to get a, a quarterback. He's 38. Where's the future with him? We, and, and if he was bad, at least we could see what Petty had or Hackenberg had. Now we'll never get to see them. We'll never get to see them. We'll never get to draft a good quarterback, okay? And so now we'll have McCown for another year and, and, and what? Exactly. Where, where do we go? By the way, <clears throat> totally simpatico with you on yeah. this one. Because... We were talking about before, Brady Brady will last longer than McCown. He'll still be winning games for New England, right. and that's the idea, is to try and beat him. You know, and the rest of the team is good enough, the defense is, is good enough right. that they can win maybe five games, possibly six. Which quarterback that's playing here right now in Los Angeles would you take? Which one would you take? Goff or, I mean, uh, 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 Rosen or uh, Darnold? Which one? Which one? I got to go with the... I gotta go with the the heeb. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go with the Jew. Come on, <laughs> Rosen in New York. That's they're made for each other. <clears throat> so just alone. But, yes. But it would just be the Jets' luck taking on the New England mm. Patriots. It would be Yom Kippur, right, Larry? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> It would be a high holiday on the biggest Kof game. Kofax didn't, didn't pitch on he the didn't. high holiday. Right? It, makes, it makes it all you know. Yeah. To this point where I got to tell you, you know, when there's a, a broadcast, I, I, I sit it out, you know, because if Koufax sat at a World Series game. Is that so? Yeah. I, how, how, do I, how do I broadcast? I remember Kofax Jerry once, once sat out of taping. Um, Did he really? Yeah. I, I said, I, I, are you nuts? What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kippur, what, so what? <laughs> 
You know, it's interesting. <clears throat> we had uh, Jerry uh, on the show just a couple of weeks ago, Larry, and I asked him, <clears throat> how come Steinbrenner himself never appeared on Seinfeld? And he said Steinbrenner shot a scene, but it was so bad you cut it. Is that a true story? True story, yeah. What was so bad about it? We brought him out, I think, for the last show of the 95 season. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not quite sure um, when it was, but um, he flew out on his private jet to do the show mm -hmm. and flew back that day. And, okay, he did it. And uh, then I, I go into editing and I'm watching the show. And, oh, my God, he was so awful. <laughs> He was so bad. It was, you couldn't use it. It was much better from behind with my voice, <laughs> you know, than actually seeing the real, the real guy doing it. Right. So that was a scene where he was with Costanza? With, he with... was with Elaine in a restaurant, I think. Okay. And um, I had to call him up and tell him he was cut. <laughs> <laughs> How did that go? I called Yankee Stadium. I said, it's, uh, I want to talk to Mr. Steinbrenner. It's Larry David. He got on the phone. <laughs> I said, uh, uh, Mrs. Steinbrenner, it's Larry David calling from the Seinfeld show. Yes, yes, Larry, what is it? I said, um, I said, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this. He said, come on, you can tell me. I'm a big boy. I can take it. You know? But you slipped back, back in that voice. It's yeah, like right. right I slipped right back in, right. And I said, I'm, you know, I've been cut from the show. And uh, I, I said, it's, it's not your fault, but it's just you know, the scene wasn't working. And uh, that was it. How do you take it? <clears throat> He was a big boy. He took it well. <laughs> so he, yeah. he told you how he was going to take it, and he actually and, and, took and it And well. actually took it, yeah. George Steinbrenner and Elaine. Wow. I would never have guessed. I would have thought that there would have to have been a Costanza George moment. I, right I there. know there was an Elaine scene. I don't okay. know. If there may have been a George scene. I'm not right. sure. I don't remember. How did you enjoy playing Steinbrenner? Did you have a blast doing that? Oh, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. I had a, I had, yeah What's I had your favorite fun. one where you were Steinbrenner? What was it? I think probably something. I remember the Calzone. The Calzone. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> that yeah. George had to get the calzones. Yeah, the calzones, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's as great as it gets, man. That's as great as it gets from back in the day. And then you had Buck Showalter on and, and Paul O'Neill. Seinfeld said Paul O'Neill was the best actor of all the Yankees that came on. I don't think I was there for that for show. That one. Oh, for yeah. that show, you'd already, you'd already I'd left. I'd already got left, yeah. You already left. That was in the last two years. Larry David here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. I, I want to take a break. And when we come back in 60 mm -hmm. seconds, you told a story off the air based on you went on our Callaway corner and you showed off your putting style, which I thought was a joke, but you're saying that really is your real putting style. Yes. Getting basically down on the floor as close as you can yes. to the putter head. I go low. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you told me with whom you were golfing the other day was Barack Obama. You were playing golf with the president? The 40, well, you know, I hate, to, I hate to name drop. <laughs> <laughs> That's back in 60 seconds with that. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to talk Curb. Um, Salman Rushdie was sure. a phenomenal he was great. cameo. Oh, yeah. Words I never thought you'd probably ever say about anything you ever done. That Salman Rushdie was terrific. Yeah, right. <laughs> he was great. And then, uh, and then <clears throat> we'll put you in uh, the, uh, if you will, judge and jury box of social situations that we have all come across. That I'm really looking forward to. Okay, and you will yeah. let us know of what's right and what is and wrong. And I cannot say enough wonderful things about this setup. I just very comfortable. Okay. This thing I could do without the in microphone? my face. The yeah. microphone? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It's a little tight. It's a little tight Yeah, it feels there. a little tight. But it, gets, it has a nice radio kind of feel to it. Yeah, too. yeah. you know, it's a simulcast. Yeah, sure. Sometimes we got to give the nod to the radio as well right. as the, the studio yeah. space got that it. we have here. Okay. <laughs> but we get the check mark, the LD check mark. Absolutely. Fantastic. Gorgeous. Fantastic. We're back in 60 seconds mm -hmm. with Larry David mm -hmm. here in the Rich Eisen. <laughs> Larry David here in the Rich Eisen Show studio. Uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm is back. Episode 3 of 10 just aired a Sunday night on HBO, 10 Eastern Time, back after a six-year hiatus. Uh, LD, I'm telling you, it is as good as ever. Thank you. And the episode this past week with the two, the two celebrity cameos, Elizabeth Banks supposedly playing herself. Yeah. She was brilliant By the in way, this episode. first time in the history of the show mm -hmm. where I actually was almost completely silent for an entire scene. The, the scene in Jeff's house. Yes. <clears throat> when I bring her in. Yes. She, she's doing all the, I'm not saying a word. Was that, yeah. was that ad-libbed, <clears throat> all that stuff? Or, oh yeah, or? all ad-libbed, yeah. How much of it is <clears throat> ad-libbed, Curb? 
most of it. 90% would you say if you had a, you know, we're sports people. We got to put percentages on things. What would you say? Yeah, at, at least. Yeah. Who's the one who cracks you up the most where it's difficult for you to get through a scene? Oh boy. Um, I don't know. That's hard to say. <laughs> um, How about the, I'll tell you the one that I would guess. Who? JB Smooth. Yeah, yeah JB. Yeah. 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 You know, we send him. It's been how many years in a row? Has it been three years in a row? What we've done? He's, uh, this will be the third coming up. These yeah. are our, our correspondent at the Super Bowl media day. We send him in there with the Rich Eisen show Mike flag and just let him let the ruckus break loose. <laughs> <laughs> and more people interview him than he interviews people. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's amazing. And Susie Esman would have been number two in terms of cracking you up. Would well, because, be? you know, I really laugh when people curse me. <laughs> I don't know why. It's always been that way. Right. Remember that wrestler in the in the second season who um, came over to my car window mm -hmm. because I was sh pretending I was shooting his kids in in the back. I was following them in the car, mm -hmm. and I was driving, and I was, and his kids were shooting me. They were in the back seat mm -hmm. facing me, and I was <laughs> and I was shooting them. And then he stops the car and he gets out and comes over to the window. Man, that guy, he's, he just broke me up. He broke you up. <clears throat> I, I, the, the one time that I was fortunate enough to be on the set years ago where I had a cameo, I get, you know, tweets from time to time. What was your cameo? Was, as a cameo, I was at Jeff Garland's uh, daughter's bat mitzvah. Okay? Oh, you were there? Yes. Oh, and that okay. was the episode where, <clears throat> interestingly enough, uh, you had something stuck in your throat. And to be safe for work for this program, we won't say exactly what was stuck right. in your throat and why. <clears throat> but you couldn't get through a scene about talking about what was in your throat. <laughs> it took it took about yeah. 10 takes for you to get through something like that. No, I'm really lucky. I, uh, it's been incredible. <clears throat> it's been an incredible run. It provides run. me with a lot of uh, laughs. Well, yeah. how did you get Salman Rushdie to appear to talk about the fatwa and then say the things that <laughs> well, he said? Well, we wrote the show before we asked him. I, there was only one way I could, I didn't want to have to wear that mustache and uh, <laughs> that wig every week. I had to get out of the fatwa somehow. Yes. <clears throat> and I thought, well, this is, this is the best way to get him because he got through it. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's get him. So we wrote the show and then, uh, then I just, uh, I called him. You? Yeah. Personally? Yeah. You got his number? Yes, okay. I had met him a, a couple of times. I also heard he was a fan of the show. Um, I think he may have told me that when I met him. So um, I called him and he was game immediately. He was? Yes. And you told him the, the concept of? Uh, uh, yes, I told him the concept. He was, he was game to do it. Okay, so what was, who was tougher to get? By the way, big Yankee fan too. Is he, are you serious? Yeah. <clears throat> so he likes John <clears throat> Sterling, Salman Rushdie. On that, I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> you haven't had that conversation no. with him. But um, so w w which was a more difficult cameo to, to get, Salman Rushdie or Bill Buckner from that episode where he had to relive? <clears throat> Bill Buckner. How did that go about? How did you go about getting Bill Buckner? Uh, I called him. So you're the one who's, you, yeah. you, you, you don't leave it up to somebody else. Well, when, I, when we need the, the big ones, yeah. You're the Rivera. You get yeah, it, you get close. Exactly, I'm the closer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I called Bill and uh, um, I was very nervous about that call because I, want, I was so desperate to do that show. I loved that episode. It's brilliant with <clears throat> Mookie Wilson and him yeah. and... But you had to describe to him what you wanted him to do, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, he, he didn't want to do it at first. I really had to stay on the phone with him, and uh, he had to think about it, and then I had to send it to him to read, and, and, um, and then his daughter was, was an actress, mm -hmm. and I said, well, 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 you know, we could put your daughter on the show, too. His daughter's a good actress. Okay. She was in Los Angeles, and I think when I offered that, the quid pro quo, the quid pro quo. So you pro quote him. I quote him, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> or he quitted you. I don't know what I don't know which one it would be. You either you either quitted you or you pro quote him. Yeah, I'm trying to figure that one out. But uh, he said yeah, and it was um, it was just one of my all time favorite episodes. It's great. Uh, again, Larry David here uh, for Kirby. By the Tuesday. way, there was a draft mm -hmm. where he dropped the baby. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. How did you not keep that? I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was funny. I knew it. You know, I, that was hilarious, him dropping the baby. Yeah. Okay. 
That was hilarious, but I couldn't do it. The other one made me cry a little bit when he caught the baby. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, I, I had it. We had to redeem him <laughs> somehow, <laughs> somehow. Somehow, yeah. <laughs> Uh, before we get to uh, our endeavor that we like doing with you, by the way, yes, fantastic guy, Bill Buckner, Buckner, one of the great guys I've, I've ever so met. What you hear yeah. about that, and obviously, he, 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 there was that moment in history, and 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 the crazy thing too is when you see the the Hank Aaron home run off of uh, off of Al Dowling, he's the left fielder that goes over his head. Oh, is that right? Yes, yeah, so he's had a ball go over his head, and yeah, but he couldn't catch that ball. That one he no, couldn't catch. No. no. Yeah. No, but I, I shouldn't bring that up. But at any rate, um, so before we get to uh, putting you in the judge and jury box about social situations. Yes, bring them bring mm, on. I'll do yeah. that in a second. But <clears throat> you were you you played golf. No, I know you don't want to name drop, but I'll do it for you. So with Obama, when did you play golf with him? We played on um, Friday. So just like last week. Yeah. All right. What is it? I mean, what is it like when the putts are like two feet away? I mean, do you give him a presidential uh, gimme? Or, or how, he, what is he it kind like? of whines a little bit about it. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. yeah. He, goes, <laughs> he goes, boy, I'm hearing crickets, you know. Yeah. Like he's waiting for you to say <laughs> that's good? He's waiting for me to give him the putt, yeah. You know, these putts, these gimmies and all that, yeah. it leads to a lot of fighting um, all the time. The people I play with, uh, because sometimes, oh, I gave you that one, you're not giving me this one. Well, that one was closer. You know, so it has, it, there's all these fights about it. Yeah. So I like a leather rule, and, and I, I like to adhere to the leather rule. Inside the leather of the handle of the putter. Yes, exactly. So you're getting down and putting the, the, yes, the, putting, the putter head into the cup. Into the cup and, and measuring, look. yes. Even with, once upon a time, the leader of the free world, that does not matter for you. Oh, no, I don't care. Okay. No. Yeah. That's, cool. <laughs> yeah. That's impressive. But he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that either. No, he doesn't, he doesn't play leather. He, he does. Oh, that's good. He's, he's pretty generous, I got to say. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, he's... And you would expect it. What, because he's a liberal? Yeah, I'm sure if you played with <laughs> Trump, he'd, he'd probably make you putt in from six inches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who won then Friday? He took $120 from me. No kidding. No kidding. Yeah. He he's took, good. He took a buck 20 from you? Yes. Him? Who else was mm. playing? Is there anybody else that we would know that was playing? Ari um, Emanuel. Okay. That makes sense. And uh, Chuck Laurie, a writer, yeah. Oh, Mr. Two and a Half Men. Right, Two and a Half Men, yeah. All four mm. of you were out there. Yes. So were you paired with Obama or were you paired against him? Or was it just, uh, what, what game do you play out there? No, it was, uh, I, I was against him and he okay. took $120 from me. And I also had an individual with him, too. A head to head? <clears throat> yeah. All total, you're $120 lighter. Yes. Barack Obama taking yeah. money from Larry David. I was sick about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready to play judge and jury of, Please, of social situations? Yes, Here we I'd go. Uh, Larry David, uh, we've done this before <clears throat> with you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I've got three social situations. You are the judge and jury as to what is done. Okay. okay. Now, okay. we've done this one with you before. By the way, you've come to the right guy. I know. <clears throat> we've done this with you before back in the day, but it's kind of a new audience. It's been f several years. So okay. the first one is destination weddings. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's already funny. Destination <clears throat> weddings. <clears throat> I say to my wife... We're going to a destination wedding. We should not give a present because my presence is my present. For, what do you say, Larry? First David? of all, where is the wedding? How far is it? Another country. Okay. You don't even go. <laughs> <laughs> you don't go. You don't go. But it's a close family friend. I, I mean, don't care. I am not flying 14 hours on a plane yes. to somebody's wedding. I'm not going to do that. Even if it's a nice destination where it's a nice hotel and you're set up? No, 14 hours on a plane, you, you can't even breathe. Come on. So what would be the, what, the distance from your house that you would An hour consider? and a half by car. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. No plane. That you, didn't, you, okay. know, you don't get on planes for weddings. Right. Okay, out of the question. So what yeah. do you put in the, in the, uh, on the RSVP? Do you write something to yeah. let them know? Can't, can't, uh, can't make it too far. <laughs> that's it that's it yeah and just leave it at that leave it at that you don't have no follow-up phone call no follow-up nothing no okay they so. have to know when they're inviting you they're, they're putting you they're making you go on a plane first of all you're spending twenty thousand dollars to get there that's what i'm saying why why do i need to right. get a candlesticks or a gravy yeah. boat after all of exactly that? If if you if you're flying to europe my god and a hotel <laughs> yes. it's gonna cost fifteen thousand dollars 
Yes. Yeah, yeah. How's that for a present? <laughs> That's what, so. But you're saying is just cut out that middleman and just you're not even going. You know, don't even go. Okay. Yeah. Here's social situation number two for you, Larry David. Sure. You're going mm. over to somebody's house. Okay. All right. For yeah. for you're watching a, a fight, for instance. By this, the way, how come you're not writing on the show with these ideas? Hey, yeah. come on. Yeah. I'm, I, well, we'll get to that in a second. Okay. Uh, so you're going into somebody's house for let's say the fight, the Mayweather McGregor fight. This okay. happened to one of our producers, sure. Ken okay. Tulo. Okay. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> they brought desserts. Fight ends. Nobody's touched the desserts. <laughs> they like these desserts. Is it okay to take the desserts home? Right, well, we did this on uh, Seinfeld. You did? Yeah, the marble rye. Well, the marble, okay. Mm. He wanted, so, didn't he, did he not right. want to take it home? He did want to take it back, and they had George's, to fish it back. George's dad, Jerry Stiller? That's right, okay. He, he wanted to take the marble rye home, right? Yes, he did. Yeah. So, <laughs> Am what I you, wrong? Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, they did try to fish the marble rye <laughs> out to make sure that it came back, but. Okay, here's the thing. Yes. You bring it over. Do they know you brought it over? Yes, they do. Well, if they know you brought it over, then you can't take it. But what if nobody's tried it? You know, it's not like a bottle of wine. A it, bottle of wine could be still, savored later on. It's still, it's you're, a perishable. You're, you're bringing it to the host, right? That's true. The host saw it. Mm -hmm. It's different if the host didn't see it, then you could sneak out with it. <laughs> <laughs> so if the host mm -hmm. never saw it, if the you place it on the it. table and there's no note. Yeah. That's when you could take it. If you think if you think you're not going to get caught, yeah, then you could take it. The problem yeah. is though, Larry, is you never know what was looking. The eye in the sky. Well, may that's catch you. that's the that's the gamble. Yeah, <laughs> but if the host sees it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can't take it. All right, the last one for you, Larry LD. Shoes off on a plane. Do you have a problem with somebody on a plane? Taking I have the shoes big off? problem with it. Oh, yeah, boy. Yeah, <laughs> keep them on, okay, and don't wear the shorts either. That's that's not good. <laughs> You do not want to be sitting next to somebody in shorts. That is the worst. So why is it you have a problem with people taking their shoes off on a plane? You know, d d don't make yourself. D d it's not your house, all right. <laughs> you're outside. You're in public. I don't want to. I don't want to see your socks. And uh, God forbid you have a little odor down there. Who needs that, right? And I don't even want to know if you do have it. Exactly. It's close quarters. Come on. <laughs> Take a couple of mints. Keep your shoes on. So those yeah. who. Take their shoes off with shorts on and then put their socked feet up on the bulkhead? Oh, God almighty. No, no, God. Oh, God. That is out. Yes. No fly list, right? No, please. Yeah. Uh, Larry, before I let you go, uh, the response has been so great for this current season of Kirby Enthusiasm. Are you thinking about another season right now? I'm thinking about it. I'm not committing to it as of yet, but I'm thinking about it. But you're thinking about it, which yeah. I know is part of the process, knowing you in the process that that has to happen first for this to happen. Yeah, I mean, it's a, um, you know, it's, it's, you get, it's climbing Mount Everest again. You know, it's, it's a big slog to do it. But you're thinking about it. I'm thinking about it, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. Absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah. Larry, love having you on here. And by the way, if I do it, it yes. won't be a five-year in-between wait. That's for sure. Well, yeah. I can't have it anymore. No, can't have that. No, Speaking on behalf not. of everyone who loves the show, cannot have I'll it. I'll be on crutches by that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the way you putt from yeah, what I saw. Exactly. <laughs> Good to see you, Larry. Good to see you. Larry David of Curb Your Enthusiasm here on the show. We're back to wrap I wish up. I could get a tape of that first baseball game you did. I really want to hear oh, it. Oh, I can get it. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I want to hear it. I want to hear an inning. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it's probably three up, three down for the Expos and the Padres. <laughs> I don't think you want to hear it. <laughs> it wasn't scintillating. They're not writing home about it. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience.